Every kid's dream, only as an adult. Almost two years ago, we spent a couple of months exploring Panama. We went through miles of the gnarliest, nastiest, rock-strewn road you've ever seen, went over this bridge, which was horrifying. You can do this, you can do this. It was the nature that we wanted. Waterfalls, hot springs, unique accommodations. The island is over there, but you can't get to it. There are no roads, there are no paths, there's no trails. It's a big mosquito-infested island in the middle of all of this water. Wait, 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 wait. But looking back at it now, I gotta ask myself, was Panama the greatest nature destination ever? Or was it our biggest mistake? Hi, I'm Rick. Welcome back to The Journey. Now, I had doubts about making this video. I mean, everything you're about to see happened a long, long time ago when I was just a little teeny weeny beginning YouTuber and it's, it's pretty damn cringeworthy. But I guess if we're cringing together, well, it makes it a little bit better. So let's start this way back adventure with a little teeny hike to find some waterfalls just outside of Boquete. Problem is, the very first thing, you gotta cross a rope bridge. I hate heights. This ain't gonna be good. One of the metal things is broken. <laughs> I'm really, oh shit, no, uh-uh. This ain't happening. Okay, dear viewers, I made it alive. <laughs> this is going to be a long few hours. This hike is not for small children. It is not for family members over the age of, well, over the age of, I can't walk off a hill. This was arduous. This was a trek, but this was very much worth it. Slippery? Here, let me clean you up. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, God, that's cold. There, you're officially behind the waterfall. Technically, we're on the way to the, hang on, first waterfall. My second, your first. I skipped the first to get to the second. I'm not even going to try the third, so, oh my lord. I have to go down that. Give me a minute. Now, even though Nikki and I both started this hike, well, when we got to the top, she decided to sit it out to commune with nature and let me kind of go forth and, well, sweat it out on my own. It was just when I came back. Okay, this is somewhat disconcerting. I left Nikki right there. There's not a single soul up here, anywhere. I lost my girlfriend. This is one of those moments in every couple's life when you get back to where you left your person, but your person ain't there. Do you keep going down the hill to try to find them? Because if they ain't there, that means I gotta come back up, but <sighs> cross some fingers. I think I found her. That orange backpack looks a lot like her. Let's go find out. I found you. Okay, in the beginning of this video, I started with this. Yep, it's a tree house. Every kid's dream. Only as an adult. So yeah, we stayed in a treehouse just outside of Caldera, and believe me, this camera, it doesn't do the place justice. So this is home for the next couple of nights, and it's really hard to film while walking up these stairs because I'm terrified of heights, absolutely terrified. This is the view that you wake up to every morning, and I hope you can hear me over the raging river. And this is the staircase that gives me the willies. And you go up, and you go up, and you go up, and you keep going up. And are you ready for this? Home. It's cozy, it's in the shape of a giant acorn. You got a double bed, not a queen, a double. I'm amazed they even got that up here. You got a, a little sink. And sneak around the back, not terribly exciting, but your very own bathroom, so you don't have to go down. That's a lovely staircase just to go in the middle of the night. Check this out. So Rick, why stay in a treehouse? Well, we needed to find a place to stay between point A and point B. We had this little gap. And I told Nikki, wouldn't it be cool to stay somewhere, oh, I don't know, unusual. I didn't know what that meant. She found this thing. 
So let's make the terrifying walk down the stairs. And oh my God, I got to switch hands. <laughs> I really am a sissy when it comes to this. So how did we sleep last night? Strangely really well. We are in the jungles of Panama, uh, just outside of, actually, I don't even think there's a town just outside of where we are. It is hot during the day. It is not hot at night. It was surprisingly chill, cool even. Kind of woke up and had to put a blanket on us. But you do have to sleep with mosquito netting because, <laughs> oh my God. We're in the jungle. Understatement. But Rick, you ask, where's the kitchen? Where did you cook? It doesn't look like a complete treehouse. Just to show you that we're not completely roughing it, we do have a kitchen complete with a refrigerator, a gas stove, a girlfriend cooking me said breakfast, and a grill. And so you sit out here in the alfresco with the river roaring and you make some yummy, yummy food. It doesn't look like much, does it? Just a simple little bridge across a simple little river. You can do this. You can do this. Rose lamb, do your thing. In a perfect world, I would set up this camera on a tripod and I would show you as I walked across the bridge, you know, me dancing eloquently. But that would mean I'd have to walk back out there, come back, get the... I'm not going to do it, so... I am not happy. No me gusta, no me gusta. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Halfway. Okay, let me show you what I see. You guys, the sense of... Yeah, it's beautiful. I looked around. I even turned. Oh, look, by the way, I don't know if you can see it. That, that's the treehouse. That's salvation. I just got to make it there. Oh, good. I get to walk through a spider web. Yay. I'm still 5,000 feet above ground. How the hell do you... There's no way down from here. Oh, where is this? Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. This is just poor urban planning. Okay, here's the part that you didn't get to see. The treehouse is attached to this resort-style nature destination. Since we were paying guests of the treehouse, we got to use the resort-style nature destination. <laughs> This somehow just seems wrong. Y'all see right up there? Right about there! There's a big platform. I just gotta go find out what's there. This is the part I hate, always having to come back for the damn camera. That little spot way down there, that's Nikki. That's where we just came from. We had heard tale of these hot springs that were in this town of Caldera. Caldera Hot Springs. Kind of makes sense when you hear the name of the town, doesn't it? So off we went in search of said hot springs. And it was not without its difficulty. Today we are on a quest to find the Caldera Hot Springs. Now naturally, me being me, I had to look it up on YouTube. They made it sound easy. Oh no, it's not. We're not even there yet. We went through miles of the gnarliest, nastiest, rock-strewn road you've ever seen. Went over this bridge, which was horrifying. And now we got to do some kind of walking in some direction. Uh, wish us luck, because I don't know if we're going to make it. There's obviously no diving here, but... <laughs> oh, this is nice. Ah! I blew a... Where? Oh, wait a minute. 
<laughs> I fixed it. It's Yeah, this is nice though. Ah. <laughs> nice little slippery entrance. Got some bugs. It's not as hot. So is Caldera Hot Springs worth the trek? Is it worth that big long ride, that scary bridge, just to jump into a bunch of pools that are, well, from this is really difficult to do. I can't seem to find the words. You should come here anyway. Just don't believe the other YouTubers when they tell you, oh yeah, it's just a little simple walk and then, ah, it ain't. But it's worth getting here. But the crown jewel for us in Panama was this little place called El Clandestino. It's a semi-long boat ride just outside of Bocas del Toro. It's, oh, how can I describe the place? It's an abandoned island that just happens to have some platforms on stilts with some tiki-type things on top of it. So you want to see the place? Well, this is basically the place. It is a big tiki hut sitting on top of, well, there's dogs here too, sitting on top of water on stilts, on slats that the sun has had its way with. And as you look back, Back from the water and I apologize you know from last week that my drone died and I can't do this any other way you got a big common area sitting right out here and this is where the host and owner Sebastian cooks up some marvelous incredible meals another one of the guest cabins out on the water and we are back here and through here you have a very comfortable spacious room with a Nikki you all remember Nikki's you got a king-size bed, which is much better than we had the last couple of places. And you have a deck, a lovely deck that looks out over, well, looks out over water. It looks out over, well, everything that's not land. Now here's the fun part. Through these saloon swinging doors, you have a bathroom. I want you to notice the floor. The floor leads straight through to the water because you take a shower there while standing in the middle of this alfresco, even better you get to take alfresco poops. No, I don't think that falls into the water either. But all through the night, you get this lovely, a comfortable, a no-screened, bug-filled, but somehow still enjoyable bathroom experience. Now, obviously, the whole point to El Clandestino is to relax. I mean, there's no town. There's absolutely nothing to do but, well, relax. So after a few days... So today is very exciting. We have not been on land for days now. We've only been on these rickety boards. By the way, the whole building just kind of shakes when everybody walks. It's a little unnerving, but you get used to it. But today, today we are hopping on a boat and we're going somewhere. We don't know yet, it might be a beach, but it's gonna have land. <laughs> you can hear me over this surf because if that's the biggest problem you've got in life is not being able to be heard over surf well you got a pretty good life and I tell you as much as I enjoy sitting on the slats and stilts of El Clandestino this is nice this is my kind of beach maybe there could be like a bar here but other than that it's a really nice beach I am pretty sure we have reached the end of the line. Here, let me show you. Nope, I think this is it. I don't have any shoes on, so uh, come here yourself and see what the rest of it looks like. Wag, 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 wag. Oh, we got the belly. We got the belly. So what's it really like living on a bunch of planks sitting on a bunch of poles sticking in the water with no access to ground? Well, for one thing, you don't get a whole lot of exercise. For instance, if you're a walker and you try to get 10,000 steps in a day, well, I counted them. The steps from my bedroom to the edge of that dock over there are 34, and that means... 
I got to go back and forth 294 times? Now here's the other thing. You're supposed to be feeling, I don't know, relaxed here. I can't seem to put down my electronics. I constantly have them on. I got the headphones on now all the time. Watching YouTube videos. Aren't I supposed to be, I don't know, looking at nature, communing with the starfish, swimming? I am swimming a little bit and there is a starfish back there. But generally speaking, I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling really, really guilty for bringing the modern world into this paradise. So what actually is my state of mind right now? Because I have been relaxing here for a few days. We did get off platform, if you will, yesterday and did a whole lot of walking. Uh, and now my legs are pretty happy for that mere 34 steps. But basically, I'm still trying to learn to relax. I'm still trying to learn to just chill the you know what out. And I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to. Oops, apparently we have boat issues. We might be stuck here. Spoiler alert, we weren't stuck. Thanks for watching.